Hello curious people, welcome to a beginner tutorial video on how to set up and use the Phantom Wallet, which is a crypto wallet reimagined for DeFi and NFTs coming to Solana and Ethereum. If you're really, really new to crypto and you don't know what DeFi and NFTs are, they're worth a Google, but basically DeFi is decentralized finance. Most basic understanding is the ability to lend your crypto and earn interest or to borrow against your crypto and pay interest. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens are things like digital artwork and uh, trading cards, items for games, those sort of things. If you need a quick definition of fungible, this is a good example. Fungible is something which can be interchanged. There's nothing that's different about it, such as uh, if I gave you $5, you can go and spend it, withdraw $5 and give me back a different $5 note. That's fine. Whereas we can't trade houses, we can't trade cats, and we can't trade artwork. They're all different. So the Phantom Wallet is really, really cool. Where we start with is coming phantom.app, which will open us up here. You can put in your email address if you want to be updated of anything. But what's really important is uh, following them on Twitter, jumping on Discord and joining their community there, and of course adding it to Chrome. If you don't know what Discord is, Discord is an awesome uh, kind of chatting application, which is well worth signing up to. It keeps it all very organized with different groups. Okay, so click on Add to Chrome. It brings us to the Chrome Web Store. Remember, whenever you're installing anything, and especially with crypto, anything to do with a wallet or anything like that, where if you use the wrong one, someone could access your crypto, make sure you're going from official sources. So here we can see this is the Phantom team. This is their official Twitter. This is their official website. They have 20,000 followers. It links to their actual website and that links to um, the Chrome Web Store, which is legitimate. There's 17 reviews and there's 20,000 users. At this stage, it's highly likely that this is legitimate. There have been many cases of people installing uh, an incorrect wallet and people stealing their funds. All right, so we have added our phantom wallet. My suggestion is to click on the extensions tab and to pin it if you're going to use it regularly. You will need an invite code. If we look down here, the most recent one is coin, which is part of Coinbase. Um, however, Discord has also been working before. So you can use Discord or Coin. If neither work by the time you view this video, then just jump into the actual Discord channel and see if it works. So try Discord or Coin. If it comes up as expired, it won't let you proceed. Now you have the ability to create a new wallet. Create a new wallet will give you the seed phrase, which you will copy and keep safe. Or you can import a seed phrase. So as an example, let's pretend we already had uh, a Solet wallet. And I'm just going to go and grab the seed phrase. We could copy that and we could come in and import it. Generate a password, which would be secure, of course. And we're good to go. Now, if someone has your seed phrase, they can access your wallet. So this seed phrase that I'm using as an example is entirely just as an example. An overview of the wallet, here we are. Uh, at the top here, wallet number one, we can click on this here and that would be our address. Anytime we need to deposit, um, we could just click it. And remember, whenever we're actually depositing, we're always gonna check the first three and the last three to make sure we haven't cut off any numbers or letters when we're actually sending uh, Solana to this wallet. We can receive, we can receive different tokens such as Radium, which is a DeFi token. Serum, which is another DeFi token. Maps, which is a really cool application where they're also building DeFi into it, etc. Plenty of or even just normal ones, USDC. Now this here, it's exactly the same wallet address. And if we want to, we could scan using a QR code reader. So at the moment, we've only got one wallet, which is fine. If we want multiple wallets, so we could come here and we could add a new wallet. 
we could either create a new one or we could import a private key. We're just going to create a new wallet. So now we've got two and you could have multiple. That's completely easy to do. If we wanted to, for some reason, delete a wallet, we could come down to settings and we could remove a wallet. We'd still be able to access it in the future. However, it is um, not the most straightforward way to do it. It's certainly not super beginner friendly. If for some reason we wanted to export our new um, our phrase, we could click here, put in our password. We may have it stored in a very safe place, but we are, may all of a sudden just need to access it for some reason. We could copy that. I'm putting these all on the sticky note just for quick access. I would never suggest you would do this. Yeah. And if we ever wanted to reset our seed phrase, this will just remove the wallets. However, um, the existing seed phrase will always still, as long as you've got it kept somewhere, you'll always be fine to re-access um, the wallet. Now, if we wanted to replace all of our wallets in here, we could do so with a new seed phrase. We could reset seed phrase. Obviously, our wallets would be gone. Put in our new seed phrase. Create a password. And now, as you can see, we've got a new wallet address and we don't have access to the, uh, the old ones. I've just restored our wallet. We can click up here on the left. We can only see there's only one wallet address. If we just click on add connect wallet, create new wallet, this shows us the wallet that we created previously. We could do it the same with number three. And same with number four. Each of these wallets have their own private key, which if we wanted to, we could export them. Now with your private key, if you go ahead and copy this and put it in an encrypted file and store it on a USB stick or something like that, just remember that you're putting this private key out into the universe and it's adding more risk. If for some reason you accidentally deleted a wallet, let's say you removed wallet number two. If we go and just add another wallet, it won't show us that original address. So what we'll need to do is just go and do everything all, all again. We're back at square one same wallet here and the next one we add is the exact same one that we had before so you never lose anything even if you delete it you still have access to it you just need to do a full restore once you've got different wallets it's a good idea to go and name them so you just come into your wallet you want to change settings click on the pen and put which one you like you may end up using different wallets for different uh DeFi protocols or what have you or maybe your your partner's uh, wallet address is part of that or your wife's or something like that if we wanted to add say an address we come down to settings address book add the plus button gym and address so basically what this is, is this is doing a really UI UX as compared to the previous wallets. So by UI, I mean user interface and UX is user experience. They're essentially building something which looks like an app that you get on the Apple store or on your Android phone. Now there are other things, there are other settings in here such as trusted apps, changing our passwords and auto lock timer. We may choose after 10 minutes that it will autom automatically lock out and if we're gonna change our network here. So I've only been on the main net, although you can go into the test net. I haven't had to change this before and I don't know if you can easily. So back to settings, everything's pretty easy to understand here. We'll go over trusted apps when I connect a new wallet. Now I'm just gonna quickly import a wallet that has funds in it to show you how to send funds. Okay, so I've connected my tutorial wallet which has some funds in it. We're just gonna show you how to use those funds. 
A quick little tip is to have a second wallet. Copy the wallet address, come back to your main wallet, and just send us a very small amount of Solana at the very least. So we'll send some Solana, paste that through. It can be really, really small, not just that much. The reason why we've got a little bit of Solana now in here, 47 cents, we don't even need that to be honest. But the reason why we've got that there is just in case we accidentally use all of the, all of the Solana in this wallet. And if we only have one wallet, then we need to go back to a centralized exchange and send it. And that can take time. And they will also charge a little bit in fees. Okay. So connecting with say Radium or any other protocol, we just hit connect Phantom. You're going to be asked if you want to auto approve transactions. Normally it's best not to do that. At, uh, with Radium, I do trust the website, so I'm going to do it like that. If I ever wanted to revoke that, I just come back into Phantom, Settings, Trusted Apps, and I can revoke. So we'll cancel again, disconnect, Phantom, first time. If I wanted to, I could just go like that. The only issue here is if I make any uh, swaps, so let's just say I do a small amount of Solana into Radium. Every time we do something like that, I have to go and approve. And you may be happy with that, but it's not as fast. So what we can do instead is we can go into our Phantom Wallet, Settings, Trusted Apps, and just tick Auto Approve. Now, we should just be able to send a transaction without having to auto approve it. Down here, this little button here in the middle, this will show us all of our recent activity, what we've done. We can click on something and it'll open the Explorer. This Explorer can give us all the information. It's certainly not as easy to read as Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain Explorers. However, it shows everything uh, that we need to see, but it'll take a little bit of understanding to understand this. If you don't like the look of this one, we can also use a separate ex Explorer, which is Solana Beach. To access that, just go to CoinGecko, find Solana, and then under Explorers here, we see Solana and Solana Beach. And then simply copy your address and paste it in, and we can view everything on Solana Beach. This makes it a little bit easier to understand as compared to the other one. As a side-by-side -side comparison, this is the default Explorer and this is Solana Beach. So we can click on the transaction hash here and we can see exactly kind of what happened. The reason why Solana Beach is better for newbies is we can see pretty quickly, it's still not as easy as Ethereum Explorer, but we can see we uh, sold some Solana and we got some Radium right here in the first kind of half of a page. Whereas if we wanted to find it on the Explore here, there's quite a bit of extra information. So we come down all the way down here. There's token transfer down here. And this is, there's a significant amount of extra data that you have to go past to work out what exactly you did. So Solana Beach is probably the best one for you at this stage. It may happen on occasion that you cannot connect to uh, the Solana network. I believe that's just because of this being in beta, maybe too many people using it. I'm not really sure why, but I imagine all those problems will be fixed pretty quickly. Also on occasion, your trade may not go through. Now you'll still see errors from time to time. There are so many different components in DeFi. You've got the website, you've got their servers, you've got your wallet, you've got the Solana network, you've got a communication line between them all. So if you do see errors, just know that this is a new technology and they're improving things and it takes everyone to work together. Now I'm just going to show you how much faster Phantom is. If you've been using a previous a wallet such as Solet, you'll see how much faster it is. We're just going to harvest this. 
the transaction has been sent, the transaction has been confirmed, just like that. If we did it with another wallet like Solet, uh, it would take a considerably longer period of time. Also, if we wanted to add some liquidity as an example, we could go ahead and add our liquidity supply, transaction has been sent, and it has been confirmed. If sometimes um, it doesn't happen that fast, it's probably happening very fast on the blockchain, but maybe Radium has too many people on it. We'll stake our LP. Confirm. So I'm still playing around on Binance Smart Chain and Matic, and I love Solana and I obviously use Ethereum. But there are some things that Solana does that I don't think any blockchain will be able to catch up to and that's certainly speed and fees. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. I love Phantom Wallet. It's really, really excellent. So do give it a try. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter. If for some reason it's quite a technical question, just sign up to Discord and go post it in there. So be aware this is a new product and the developers are busy building. So there may be a delay in the reply. Thanks very much for watching. Please give it a like and subscribe and stay tuned for new tutorials. Thanks.